In the last video of our pole barn build series, we got up our four corner posts, and today we're starting to get the sidewall post in place. So we're pulling a string line, and we're gonna start laying out where those posts go, start drilling with the auger, and getting these side posts set. ordered like enough to make 75 but I have more than enough to make I have enough to make more than 75 in some parts like I got the hardware that one definitely was dead look that was a little off this way somehow that one's dead center I say dead center it's close to dead center yeah, that one's got to go back that way. Yeah. A little bit. It ain't going to go much. I mean, we do it. Damn. Yeah. This is center right here. Well, we somehow messed this up. We drilled four perfect holes in the last video. And the first three holes we dug here, only one of them is right. And that's the problem with using these augers in general is that if they hit a root or they hit anything that's a different consistency, they tend to go the path of least resistance either that happened or we weren't paying close enough attention because we're off by quite a bit which means that we're going to be putting a ton of concrete in these holes make sure you tell them that i wasn't running zape measure <laughs> uh, but pops was lining up the auger so <laughs> One thing we're doing before we put these posts in the ground is we're figuring out which way the bow is or the crown and basically placing that in the most desirable spot before we put it in the ground and making a mark on the post so that we know where it needs to go. In this instance, we want the bow to face to the inside of the building because it's a lot easier to kind of push it out and let these trusses sort of fall in and then the friction will help hold them there as well instead of them being splayed out and now you're having to try to pull these posts together to keep these trusses where they need to be. So just trying to think ahead a little bit and uh, should help us when we go to install the trusses. So these posts are, I don't know if you'd call them easier, but they're different than putting in the corner post. We're able to brace them off uh, this way using the same method, but in order to brace them off uh, this way, the boards would be in our way. But that gives us an opportunity to use two boards, both bottom and top, with marks on them at 12 feet so that we can make sure that this post is perfectly centered from this outside post. We're gonna do that all the way down. That will 
100% positively make sure that the post spacing is correct and then we still have our string line in there to make sure that they're all perfectly in line. Doing 12 foot on center and I put this board on the outside of that post instead of the center of the post because I was just doing the same thing I did on the outside. That messes things up. So that pushes it two and three quarters off. So we got to shift these boards over, move this post over two and three quarters, but thankfully we caught it before we did the other one that way too. two pieces of rebar put into all the posts we need to finish up this side these are the last three posts that have got to go in on this building so we're gonna get them braced off may or may not pour the concrete this morning we may wait till this afternoon but we're gonna get them in the hole and uh, get them get them put up Dead nuts. Dead nuts. Look at that. Just come look, come look at when I say dead nuts, I mean dead nuts. Dead nuts. Last batch. Yep. Last big batch. I mean, it's like the last batch. It's like <laughs> another freaking 5,000 pounds of concrete. <laughs> well, last three poles. Last three poles. <laughs> Before we start hanging trusses, I want to honor what I said in the last video and just answer a handful of questions that came up in that last one. So first and foremost, massive update for you guys. The company Backwoods Buildings that we got this kit from, we spoke to them for about a year before starting this project of like what we needed to buy from them, like getting everything ironed out. When it came time to swipe the credit card, they just said, don't worry about it, we got it. They donated the entire kit that you see behind us to this project, which is insane and we're incredibly grateful because we're gonna be able to use that extra chunk of change to hopefully expedite the rest of this building, which is gonna make such a ma massive difference in Molly and I's life, and they're just a small business, and so we're just incredibly grateful that they chose to do that. Now, for this building, this is a 30 by 48 by 12 pole barn which just includes the poles and the roof you'll see why in future content of why we chose to just go with the roof now but long story short we don't have the money to do the entire building right now this is a great way to get started now this kit cost about five thousand dollars however they said if you reach out to backwoods buildings in chipley florida which they offer shipping by the way if you're not from there we're about two and a half hours away that they would offer you guys $250 off if you wanted to grab one of these kits. So about $5,000 for the kit uh, with a handful of upgrades that we did, and then about $1,000 worth of concrete in the holes to make all of that work. Now, we had basically one comment beyond that. Why in the world did we put the post in the ground with concrete and didn't do like wet set brackets like you see a lot of people do here on YouTube? 
And I will be as short and concise about this as possible because Molly will get mad at me because I could talk about it for 15 minutes. Simply put, it was not possible due to the building size, location, and wind requirements. We had a structural engineer go through our options of what we could use and without extensive footings with massive rebar structures in them, it would not meet the uplift and shear requirements of this building being an open structure with a 150 mile per hour wind rating. So we tried to do it, but unfortunately it was not an option. I will end that by saying these are not your home center posts, okay folks? These are CCA rated or treated posts. These things are meant to last for an extraordinarily long amount of time. And it is not something that we are even remotely concerned about with them like rotting away. It's not gonna be an issue, I promise you. All right, step one of putting these trusses up was we've gotta get these posts cut off nice and level all the way around. So we're gonna go and establish a level line halfway up all the posts so we have something to measure from. We're gonna do that with a laser level. What'd you decide on height? As high as we can go. Okay. Which may or may not be 12 feet after it's fully graded, but. This thing's basically cheap. All right, Molly, just for my sanity's sake, since I don't use these levels very often, we need to check this thing, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna pull a string line down, and when I get to the end and pull it tight and tell you to, I want you to walk down and look at the post and make sure the string matches up with our line. Okay. I think I can handle that. I'm here. Okay. This one, the string's a little low. Half an inch. Half an inch? Yeah. So is that one. So is that one. Half an inch? Are you right on your line down there? Yeah. Half an inch. Yeah. Like, can you see it? It's like, it's like that much. Take my pencil and mark the, mark the line. According to this thing, we're dead nuts. I mean, the only thing that makes any sense is that our string lines drooping but it shouldn't be drooping that much well i guess i trust the laser more than i trust the string because the string is giving us inconsistent results and when i pull it real real tight it's within like an eighth or a pencil line's worth of my line so i'm gonna go with the laser line all right this one's our lowest post that's the one that we need to pull our first measurement on that dictates how high we can go so i'm gonna pull the uh, sky jack over here go up and see what our building height's gonna be. Also, Molly, six inch difference from back to front. On the ground yeah. level. Just gotta take that into account. We're gonna be about an inch shy of 13 feet on this lowest post, which after doing some grading and all that in the end, I'm thinking that's gonna end us up, Molly, somewhere around the 12 foot mark. Somewhere around that, eve height wise. Mm -hmm. but. It'll just be a random number, more than likely. Now we gotta cut it off. anyone to worry about this contraption here being on this dirt all right because this here man lift identifies as an off-road man lift all right so we're good to go <laughs> Molly, they're all cut off. I hope, hope we did that right. 
don't hope even, you measured right. Don't even It's on you that. if you did it. <laughs> I'm blaming you if you did it wrong. Mm hmm There's a short one. It's Molly's Mal, fault she didn't hold the tape measure. I ought to. I don't know, man. That whole string line laser fiasco has me a little, I don't know, a little weirded out. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't that. know about that. We're going to go with it because uh, it's a pole barn, you know? And I'm trying to build it like it's a daggone piece of furniture. I'm thinking things need to be within like 16th. I'm looking at these posts and I'm like, daggone. That thing's got, I think that one's got a little bitty bend to it. Oh, eh. I need to throw them on the jointer. Oh, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> They're 16 foot long posts. What do you expect? They're going to have a little bow to them in some which way or... Another. It's, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. It's I gonna know. be all right. I know. I know. It's gonna be all right. Well, folks, it's trust day, and this is what makes these types of pole barns so unique and so interesting. You won't see these many places that have heavy snow loads because that's just not what they're designed for. But in places like where we live, these things are incredible. We have like 12 foot post spacing, which is insane. 12 feet apart. So if you were using this as an open barn. You could easily drive anything in and out any which direction, put a giant roll-up door anywhere you want. And look at how lightweight this is. Now this is one half of the truss. You bolt these together. But this is how lightweight the truss is. And this truss is going to be full span without a ceiling, right? So we're going to get the full height in the middle of this barn instead of having a ceiling in it, which is gonna be really cool. So these, two of these get bolted together to make our truss. And then in theory, we just set them up there and bolt them in. <laughs> and then you got two by sixes that attach into these cups right here. And uh, that'll be our purlins that our roof attaches to. This okay, will it's, be it's interesting. It's lightweight, but it's not like that light. <laughs> Still kind of heavy. Let's see how heavy it is now. I think I can just lift it up there on top of them, top of them posts. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Still crazy though that you can just pick up the entire truss. All right, now the man lift over here. That just sits on top. Sits on top of the post. And it'll stay. Maybe. Oh. I do realize I have a tractor, and the tractor probably lift this thing right up there, no problem. But sometimes. Sometimes you just got bam, man. <laughs> yep, <laughs> right there it is. <laughs> I didn't think this one through very much, Molly. I think this might have to be a two-person, two-person or job, and you're sure as heck ain't getting up here on this thing. I gotta get over there to fasten it in, while also simultaneously mm. holding it up here so it doesn't fall. Let's just see what happens if I try to drive this thing. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> we can't even like get in between. Well, my goal, was have this thing already set up where I wanted it. Just goofed up on the order of operations here. <laughs> I literally have no idea how I'm gonna be in two places at once. there's a will folks there's a way i think my heart rate is like a thousand even if it's very sketchy and i wouldn't stand anywhere underneath it till i get it bolted in that's 
that's gonna be a tall building. Holy <laughs> moly. We could have a daggum 16 foot door in here probably. Oh gosh. Hold on, let's find out. We could easily have a 14 foot door, but maybe even a 15 foot door. And I don't think, I think 13.3 is like the highest legal height of a vehicle, something like that. So hmm. you could fit anything you yeah. wanted in here. The biggest of the biggest whatevers. You could fit a daggum semi truck in here, Molly. Do we need a tractor trailer? Ready? No, we do not. You sure? Yeah. Probably get me a good deal on Facebook Marketplace. Oh no. Somebody take Facebook Marketplace away. This is not a how to channel. <clears throat> this is just a how we're doing it channel, as uh, Riley would say. Because, uh, Riley, this is mildly sketchy, but also in a contained sort of way. We're not being reckless. Let's let this sucker down. I gotta get back up there, though. Oh, do it quick, because I'm hot. Uh, Are you just admiring it, or? That's wild. It's huge. That's massive. Golly. If you're enjoying this series, please consider subscribing because in next week's video, we're getting all of these trusses hung, which was quite the experience, and you're not going to want to miss it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.